Hey Airsoft players, welcome to HitGuns.com. In today's video we're going to be going over a comprehensive guide of how to tear down and how to repair a common issue with a CM28 uh, AK-47 assault rifle. The tools you're going to need, um, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, a precision screwdriver with a uh, point with a FH0 Phillips head, and a T9 or T8 Torx. T9 fits a little better inside the gearbox screws. And you may end up needing a hammer or a rubber mallet. And you'll be needing some thread locker or Loctite, whatever brand, as long as it, it's thread locker. Okay. The first step of taking apart an AK is, of course, the basic safety measures. Make sure the gun's unloaded, make sure the chamber's cleared, and make sure the battery's disconnected. You don't want this thing, you, you don't want to check your barrel and then have it go off in your eye or something along that line, or get a nice little shock in the back, etc., etc. So, basic safety. Okay. The first step of taking apart an AK is one of any way you can go. You can remove the stock first, you can remove this, the grip first, uh, you can remove the selector first. I recommend the selector first because this is attached to the gearbox. It's attached to a threaded bracket inside of the gearbox and that will prevent you from removing this entirely. Okay. So, In order to get the selector arm off, if you'll notice there's a small round hub right here. Um, you could pry this off with a uh, flathead screwdriver or a prying tool, whichever you choose to use. Just when you do take this off, try and do this in a 360 motion. You want to be able to uh, gently be able to pry it off. You should get one side up, one side of this hub up, and then the other side. You should just be able to like this, kind of pry it off like that. This is to prevent these forks on the hub from breaking off. You don't want to break those. It's, this is purely an aesthetic piece, but it looks a little more complete when this is on here. Because you can see a big Phillips head screw is kind of unsightly. Okay. Once you've gotten that off, you want to take your Phillips head, whichever one you choose, and unscrew this screw. This is the Phillips head screw. The left lefty loosey righty tighty rule applies here. Just loosen it. Now when you pull this off, there's going to be some hardware that comes with it. There's a small brass um, bushing that goes inside here. This is to keep the screw threads from getting damaged by the um, the connection, the linkage hub that's attached to the um, that's attached to the the selector arm. And there's like there's a retaining uh, washer right here. It looks sort of like a clutch plate on a car, if you ask me. But um, zoom in on all this so you guys get a pretty good idea of what's going on here. Okay. As you can see. There you go. There's your lock washer. There's your brass bushing right there. Once you've done this, uh, there should just be the linkage there should just be the linkage hub here and the selector arm. The selector arm should come off. Most times it's pressed in there pretty hard. Uh, it may take the linkage hub with it. You want to take the linkage hub out. You do it with your fingers, or if it doesn't want to give, take a screwdriver, lift it out. Okay? It's so got all that out. Keep all your hardware together. Don't lose it. Okay. Zoom in out here. Okay. Next step you want to move on to is removing the grip. That's also attached to the body, which you don't want to lose any of these screws again. Okay. In order to remove the grip from the body, there is a small screw on the bottom of the handle. It's a Phillips head screw. You should be able to see it right there. And you just unscrew this. Left, un left unscrew it. Comes right out. Once you have that off, Slide the grip off. That should expose the motor, that should expose the motor cage and the lower portion of the gearbox. Okay. Once you have all of this off, the next step to uh, get this apart would be to you want to disconnect the Tamiya connector from the other Tamiya connector connected to the gearbox inside here. That flew over your head. We'll show you in a moment. Okay. There's three screws holding the stock in place. There's a 
a two-pronged fork that holds the stock in place. If this should break, this is repairable. Most people get the misconception that the gun is broken from the receiver down. This is based on a Marui design, which has this these forks on here, which can be removed by getting rid of two screws, which we'll show you in a moment. The most particular screws to get out is possibly this one right here, located right uh, below the motor cage. You want to be able to unscrew it. I recommend doing this with the grip off because there's more clearance for your screwdriver handle. Or if you can, use a long shaft uh, screwdriver, hand, or screwdriver, which will be able to uh, pass the grip and everything else. You can probably do this while the uh, grip is on if you have a long shaft screwdriver. But work with what you got. Save yourself a lot of headaches. Okay. Once you have both these screws off, again, take care not to lose any of your screws. Once you have these off, that's done. The next part is getting the screw off. This is pretty self-explanatory. Not dropping your screwdriver. And you should be able to take the screw out. Okay. Didn't quite unthread it all the way there. Okay. Then you should be able just to pull the stock off. You don't want to pull it off entirely quite yet. You want to be able to just to expose the wiring right here. If it doesn't give or if it doesn't let you go any further, don't force it because you might break the Tamiya connector inside the stock. Uh, what you want to do is just take off the butt plate like you would for a battery and it should free the Tamiya connector up. If it's not freed by then, straighten it out inside the stock, pull it out like this. There you go. That should be pretty straight. Kind of guide the Tamiya in there. Try not to pull it out of the way if you don't feel like pushing the wiring through the stock again. It's kind of tedious. Okay. Here you have a small type Tamiya connector, like on the other end. Okay. Same principle as a battery. You just want to um, you just want to be able to disconnect it, like so. Okay. Keep your wiring inside the stock. Put your stock off to the side. Okay. Once you've done all that, the next step would be to remove the bolt housing cover. This would be a bolt housing cover on a real AK. In this case, it's just uh, if this was a certain model of AK um, that we sell, the battery would go here, a stick type battery would go right here, and the Tamiya would be coming out this end as opposed to the rear end. Okay. There's two steps to doing this. This is possibly the most tedious step about taking apart the body. The first step you want to take is to disconnect the bolt, uh, the bolt rod from the uh, from the locking from the locking mechanism that holds the uh, bolt, cap, bolt housing in place. What you want to do to get that off, what you want to do is just pull back on it, and you should be able to just roll it out. Let's get a zoom in on this while I do this. Tricking my hands out of the way. There you go. All right, you should just be able to pull back on it, lift it out like that, and try and keep it like this. When you t try to take off this plastic covering, which will be the next step, you want to take care as to not pull this out because it is a pain and a half to get back in, and you have to line up certain brackets and such like that, and it's just a big hassle, so just avoid yourself a headache. Try to take care when you do this. The next step, depending on which model of AK you have, you want to be able to remove the hop-up lever, which is on the inside of the bolt door right here. It can be either plastic or it's metal. With the metal one, we recommend you remove it because it's a little less forgiving. With the this model, since it seems to be plastic, you might just be able to bend it inwards and lift it out, but just so you don't break anything, you might want to just take it out anyway because it's a lot easier just to avoid it than have to put in a new hop-up because of it. On the inside right here, there's a small Phillips head screw that holds the uh, hop-up hop lever in place. So you can get a zoom in on it. It's kind of hard to see since it's a black plastic piece. So, okay. okay. You should be able to see it. It's right there. Yeah. You want to take your precision screwdriver and pull that out. The 
This may be difficult as the plastic uh, arm wants to flex, so you might just have to sit there and m gently push on it in order to get the screw out. And once you have the screw out, take care not to lose it. The screw is excruciatingly tiny, you don't want to lose that. The next step is to remove this small screw. This is what holds this plastic cover onto the body. So just do that by unscrewing it. Don't unscrew any things by now. What are you doing working on an airsoft gun? Okay. Alrighty. You should just be able to lift back on it. There's interlocking tabs on the sides of these uh, this plastic housing and on the receiver that hold it in place. As you can see, I've already kind of just broken them off right there. Not really broken. Okay. And then you should just be able to pull back, lift up, comes off. Now, if you didn't take off the hop up arm, there should be a. The arm just should, just should fall on the body. And it should be right there. Okay. Now, you're about 75% of the way done when it comes to taking off the body. So, let's get a zoom out here. The next step to doing this would be to remove the four screws on the bo bottom portion of the body. This is so you can remove the barrel portion from the lower receiver portion of the gun. There's four screws here. There's one, two, three, four. Okay. Same rule applies here. When you separate the barrel from the body, you want to take care as to not uh, lose their small nuts inside of the body. They do this for the sake of, I guess, cost effectiveness and should the screws inside the body strip, it doesn't damage the body as opposed to just damaging some screws which are easily replaced as opposed to having to get a new upper receiver. Okay. There's no particular order you have to take these off, but when you tighten them, I do recommend you try and tighten them in a clockwise motion, similar to that of when you do uh, change a tire on a car. It just makes things go a lot neater and it causes less strain when you're moving the gun. Sometimes these screws may give you trouble trying to come out. The best advice I can give you to see that these screws come out is to take um, a flathead screwdriver or a razor blade knife and place it on the side of the threads of the screw. This will act as another um, threading as another threading device, so you can the screw will just come out on its own as opposed to having to pull it out, pull up on it, and risk uh, stripping the screw. Strip screws mean a big headache down the road. Once you've done all this, again, watch out for the nuts coming out of the body. You should just be able to remove it, like so. Do you see? One of the nuts fell out. Okay. Try and keep all this together. And on the right side of the upper receiver, there's a small spring that sits right here, which is, um, this is just a, a tensioner that they use to hold the, um, the guide rod in place for the uh, bolt handle. That's just so it sits there nice and tight. Okay. Once you have the upper receiver out of the way, move it aside. Okay. Now, to get the to get the gearbox out of the body, it's pretty simple after this, seeing as how you've removed everything that holds it in place. You want to push the Tamiya out the back of this fork right here. Okay. You should just be able to guide this out. Okay. And now you have the gearbox separated from the body. Hey guys, welcome back. Now we're going to show you how to disassemble a version 3 AK-47 gearbox. Okay. The first step to doing this, depending on what model of version 3 you have, most of uh, the SEMA models, this one example, have Phillips head screws that hold the gearbox shell in place. Okay. There's two steps that you should be worried about before warned that be careful when you um, be careful when you keep your parts together because you don't want to lose this portion right here. This is your selector arm. This is a necessity to your gun's performance, and it can very easily get lost. And when you put this back on, there's a special process to getting the teeth aligned and getting it straight. If it's not aligned properly, the full auto, semi auto may work not work properly, which is a major pain to do if you don't do it right. So once you have the gun together and you go to shoot it and 
it doesn't shoot in full auto, or it shoots in full auto and then shoots in semi-auto, then that explains what it is. Okay. The first step to taking this apart would be to remove this protection cap right here. This is just to keep the keep dirt out of the gearbox from touching the sector gear. The sector gear is right here. The spur gear is right here, and the bevel gear is right here, and the pinning gear is attached to the motor. So. Uh, this keeps dirt from getting inside the sector gear mostly because it's pretty much exposed once this is removed. So this can be removed by snap it off on one side, and you don't like that feel against your nails because this gearbox has that texture that makes your teeth hurt when you run, run your nails against it. Okay. Take the flathead screwdriver. You should be able to pry off the prong. There you go. And as you can see, part of the sector gear is exposed right here. The next step is to remove the selector arm. Okay. You should be able to just remove the first portion of it, put that aside, and then take off this portion, which is what activates the safety and what um, prevents the trigger from moving back. Okay. Once you have that done, you want to remove the motor cage from the gearbox. This is done with two Phillips head screws. They're the longest screws inside the gearbox. And as you can see from the factory, it's all thread locked in there, so it may, prov may provide a little bit of difficulty getting it out, so. You wanna just take these screws out, left unloosen them. Okay. Get that screw out, don't lose any of your screws. When separating your parts, you might want to separate internal parts from external parts, just so you don't get them confused. Okay. And your gearbox, your gearbox, your, your motor cage should just be able to come off. The next step would be to remove the quick connectors, which are located right here and here. There's a positive and a negative lead. They're usually marked on the top of the motor sink. There's a red dot on the side you need to put the red wire, and a black. And there's no dot, just the silver dot right there. It comes right off. Okay, this is done. You can pull off the motor cage, and then disconnect the wiring by pulling it off like so. There you go. And your motor cage is separated from your body. Okay. The next step to getting this apart would be to remove. The selector arm assembly, this is um, the ambidextrous part which connects to the, s the selector plate on the other side, which is right here. This is what engages and disengages the full auto, semi auto. This latch right here determines which mode you're in. There's just, as you go along, you'll understand how that works. Okay, so you want to be able to remove this. This is also thread locked in there, it may or may not be easy to get out. And you should just be able to lift this portion off right here. Or if not, it's going to be difficult. Get a flathead and just pry it off. There you go. Comes off like that. Okay. Then the other portion should come out the other side. Memorize what side goes on what. The long input goes on the left side. And this portion right here, the part that's just the connection, uh, goes on the right side. Once you've done that, you're almost to the final step of getting uh, splitting the gearbox apart. There's two uh, extra steps you need to take. There's you have to remove the screws from the body. There's four holding it in place total. There's one on the front portion right here, one right here towards the lower portion of the front. There's one right behind the trigger, and there's one that's under the selector assembly. Also on the top, there's a retaining. Uh, I don't know what you'd call this. I guess it's a retaining slider bracket. The only thing I can think of. Okay. Yeah, you want to be able to slide this off. We'll show you how to do that in a moment. This is pretty handy for when you want to test your shim job or you want to make sure that the gearbox spins properly, etc., etc. It's one notable feature about the version 3. So, first step you want to do is remove the screws. As you can see, these ones are providing difficulty. So, you want to take a larger screw driver or a larger bit and get that off. Just like that. Okay. If you like text yet, everyone, 
certainly hope so. Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah, all your screws are removed. Next step would be to get the slider plate off. Some are easier than others to pull off. Usually some you can just use with grip on and it should be able to pull off. Okay. To get this portion off right here, you're going to need a fill, uh, flathead uh, screwdriver in order to get this off. So what you can do is you can take the flathead, put it under here, just kind of slide it under here. Kind of bend this up a little bit, make it a little bit easier to get off. And then you just want to. So this can prove to be incredibly difficult if you're not careful. Okay, once you get this off. Should just be able to come off like that. Uh, the best course of action to get this portion off now would be to use a pair of pliers and grab it from under here, like a pair of needle noses, and pull this forward. But I don't have a pair right now, so I guess I just have to just slide it off like that. A little bit of ingenuity never hurt anybody. Okay. Don't lose this portion. The gearbox should be just about free to get apart. This is done. You want to split this portion apart, and you want to watch out for two things that pop out. There is a anterior reversal latch right here, which is has a habit of just going everywhere. This trigger assembly is going to spring out this way, and the guide rod is guaranteed to come out. So the best way to prevent the most catastrophic one of them all, possibly springing off and hitting someone next to you or something along that lines, is to hold this portion down as you remove as you split the gearbox in half. You can split the gearbox in half using a flathead. Can, any portion of it should do. See? It comes off like that. Okay. And your gearbox should be opened up. This is what the inside of a version 3 looks like. Okay. Let's name your anatomy real quick. You've got your cylinder assembly, which is where all of your compression is, where everything that you do or anything that your gun does is powered through here. You got your spring, you got your guide rod, which holds the spring in place, you got your trigger switch assembly, and you've got your gears. This is your sector gear, your spur gear, and your bevel gear. And this is your anti reversal latch. This prevents these from spinning backwards and potentially causing damage to your teeth. Okay. And as we take it apart, we'll show you more. And this portion right here is important to your feed system, which is what essentially causes the BB to feed into your hop-up chamber, as you see right here, as a spring action. Uh, this, be careful when handling this, don't bend this, try not to break it, because if this breaks, your gun's not going to feed, period. In this video, we're going to address a common issue that we run into with version 3 gearboxes, the AK notably. Um, out of the blue, real deus ex machina, the Trigger will start not engaging, as in it won't push the trigger the trigger bridge into the contacts, which can prove to be a real nuisance because it's a it's a minor problem that can turn into a a, a hindrance. You can't use your gun once this problem happens. So this is usually caused due to a uh, poor quality control on behalf of companies. What they'll do is. There's supposed to be a set screw that holds this uh, housing in place that keeps that from happening, keeps the uh, the trigger bridge from moving all over the place and causing causing this to misalign right here, this um, trigger portion. Okay, to fix this, um, if you have access to it, get your hands on a coarse thread 0.9 millimeter uh, coarse uh, screw, metric screw. This, this will help alleviate this problem, primarily. Um, you may have to dremel it, file it to a certain length, because on the other portion, on the other side of the gearbox, you don't want this to rub against your, your um, selector plate. This can cause your selector plate not to move or damage your selector plate, and you don't want that. Okay. The first step to getting to the trigger switch assembly and installing the screw is to... Remove your cylinder assembly. This is done by, you want to be able to pull the guide rod out, like this, and the spring along with it. 
Usually on SEMA guns, there's a small washer that acts as an anti-torsion device, which will cause damage to your spring over time. But a bearing guide rod works better than this. So let's put that on side. Okay. And you want to be able to remove your cylinder. Okay. So your cylinder should just slide out. Take care not to lose any of your bushings. If you don't want to re-shim your gun, I recommend you keep your bushings and your shims in the place that they want to. So, If you want to not do that, push forward on your, on your tappet plate. Slide it over the bearing, uh, bush bearing bushing. Just pull this out. Your whole cylinder, cylinder assembly should start sliding out. Be careful not to lose the spring and be careful not to let it pop out. A small spring right here attached to the gearbox and attached to the tappet plate, which causes it to return forward when it feeds. This one didn't want to go anywhere, so you're in luck with that one. Right. As you can see, the trigger assembly is just hanging there, which is what causes the trigger slip to happen. Okay. Again, when you you want to remove your gears next, be careful not to lose the order that your shims are in. If you don't want to reshim it, if you do want to reshim it while you're in here, then have fun. You know, do what you got to do. Didn't mean that sarcastically, folks. It just, um, sometimes I'd rather pull teeth than do shimming. Okay. Pull your gears out. Okay, you want to pull out your bevel gear first. It's easy to get to. And you want to pull out your anti-reversal latch. Take care not to uh, lose the small spring that's attached to it or damage the small spring that's attached to it because the spring is a real nuisance to find. We have them, just, you know, if you can, try to avoid damaging it. Okay, remove your sector gear, and then remove your spur gear. Okay. Sometimes the bushing may want to go with it, sometimes it may not. If you can, if you can help it, try and keep the bushing on there, because it'll help you keep your shims in order. Once you've done all this, okay, you should have just your trigger housing exposed. That should just be the only thing attached to your gearbox. Attached to your trigger housing is a spring that attaches to the the trigger bridge, which you don't um, you don't want to attach this while you do this. So if it comes undone, then we'll show you how to put it back on. For now, it's not necessary. So okay, take that off. And your next step is to remove your trigger assembly, which is if it's in place. If it's in place pretty well, like this one, you don't want to move it. If it isn't, then you can take it off. Okay. Don't remove your you can remove your spring that attaches to that too. Okay. Once you have all that exposed, you should just have your trigger housing right here. Okay. Now, what you want to do is make sure it seats properly. I'm going to zoom in on this. Okay. You want to make sure it seats properly inside the gearbox when you do this. If you notice, there's a small hole right here. This is the screw that they commonly miss from the factory. Okay. So if you have your machine screw, your tiny little machine screw, this one particularly, okay, you want to put that on the end of your screwdriver. If you have a magnetic head, this helps right here. Okay. So you want to put this screw inside there and just thread it through. It may take a little bit of force because you, if you don't have a self-tapping screw, this may be a nuisance. Okay. If you did this right, it should be very snug, very secure. It should be coming out. Okay. Also, if it's the right, uh, if it's the right length on the other side of the gearbox, it should be coming out. This hole right here. There's a small hole right there. If it's popping out of this end, you don't. You might want to take a file, take a Dremel to it, and get it the right size. Try not to Dremel it while it's inside the gearbox because you don't want to damage these rails right here because that's what attaches to the selector plate. On this particular model, it doesn't have a selector plate that, uh, long enough to reach this. That's mostly for the G36, uh, the AUG gearbox, which has the. Mechanic, or the, has the mechanical electric cutoff right here. So that's secure. 
We'll move on to the next step.